coming this morning. We appreciate your time. Um, just a couple things I want to mention. Housekeeping, out this door around the corner, down towards the cafeteria on the left is where the restrooms are. Um, we will not be taking a break this morning. We've got a lot of material to cover, so if you do need to take a break, feel free. There's still refreshments outside um, the room, so uh, feel free to grab that, but you just can't bring um, the food or coffee in the auditorium. Um, if you have questions, please write them down. We're going to leave 20 minutes at the end of the presentation to answer those questions. So without further ado, I will introduce your speakers today. Um, this morning we have Megan Hack. Megan graduated from Northern Illinois University with a degree in psychology and a Master of Public Health <clears throat> degree from Elmhurst University. Megan has been employed with the McHenry County Department of Health for over 25 years. She is currently an assistant director for the nursing division, managing the community health section. She has been a participant in the community health analysis and improvement plan process since 2006, managing the implementation since 2010. Ryan Sachs graduated from Northwestern University with a Bachelor of Arts in Biological Sciences and Psychology and has a Master of Public Health degree from Loyola University, Chicago. Ryan has been the, in the epidemia, sorry, Ryan has been the epidemiology program coordinator for the McHenry County De Department of Health since April of 2021. Prior to his role as the epidemi epidemiology program coordinator, that's a, a mouthful, Ryan was an epidemiologist at MCDH. Chloe Cavita graduated from the University of Illinois at Chicago with a Bachelor of Science degree in Biological Sciences and Master of Public Health degree from Loyola University, Chicago. Chloe has been an epidemiologist for the McHenry County Department of Health since 2020. Prior to her role as an epidemiologist, Chloe was a health educator at MCDH, specializing in the tobacco-free communities. Maura Gosen received a Bachelor of Science degree in Biomedical Sciences from Marquette University in 2019 and a Master of Public Health degree with a concentration in epidemiology from New York University in 2021. She has been working as an epidemiologist for McHenry County Department of Health since May of this year. So we hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, thank you. Here's Megan. Yay. I'm not as tall as Christy, so. <laughs> um, thank you all for coming. We really appreciate you taking your time out to hear um, the data from this presentation. We're really excited to present it. And I just wanted to start out by saying that all of this information um, is provisional pending IDPH approval. So we're hoping for that really soon, but I just wanted to say that to start. Okay. Um, I'm going to just go over the process of the community health assessment and the improvement plan so you kind of understand how we got to the, where we are before they start presenting the data. So to start, I just wanted to bring up our funding partners and our key players. So Advocate Aurora Health, um, MCDH, the McHenry County Mental Health Board, and Northwestern Medicine all helped fund this project. Um, but they're not just funding it, they have been there from the beginning to the end, so we appreciate their partnership. They helped develop the survey, they helped choose the key informants, so it's just, um, they're really key players in this whole process, so thank you guys. So every three years, we partner with our hospital systems to complete the community health assessment. Um, the health department has a separate plan that needs to be submitted through IDPH, which is called our I-Plan, and that's done every five years but we do like to collaborate with our partners, so we do complete this every three years. Um, the process normally takes about a year to complete the entire process. However, this past couple years, as everyone knows, was a huge challenge because of COVID, so it took us a lot longer because we had some setbacks, and so it took us um, about two years to complete this, but that's not a normal year. So the components of the assessment is everything here. So we have a, what is called our Healthy Community Study, where we contracted with NIU to complete that. And then we have our Community Analysis, which was done um, in-house by our, our MCDH epidemiology team. So the Healthy Community Study is the biggest piece that we had to pull together. Um, so they completed a community survey, and that was a random sample. So 
We chose to do a random sample because it fairly represents the characteristics of a population, so that's why we chose that. And we had 1,200 residents complete that survey. And then we also had a key informant survey. Um, we sent that out to 181 key informants in our community, but only 76 returned that um, survey, which isn't too bad, but we would have liked to have seen higher participation in that one. And then we also conducted focus groups. Um, we had 38 participants in our focus groups, and those were community residents. And so we had focus groups in English and Spanish, so we had two English focus groups and one Spanish focus group. And then the community analysis, um, like I said, was done by our epidemiology team, and um, that's using secondary data sources. And then the epi team took all of this information, so the healthy community study, all the surveys, all the focus group information, and then the secondary data analysis, and they pulled together what's called our community health assessment as a whole. So um, when we look at all this data, we have to come up with what our biggest health priorities are in our community. So that's where we pull together our core team to kind of look at all the data, um, review the data, and then we come up with some priorities. And then what we do is we build these work groups in to address these priorities for the next three years. So these are our core team players that review the data. I'll let you look at those. Um, we really appreciate everyone who attended those meetings because they were very long and a lot of data was presented, but it was, uh, it was I think, very interesting. So what happens is um, the core team participated in five data meetings, so they were all about two hours long and they heard all the data from this entire study. And then a list of health issues were identified from that data and um, we used a voting technique to kind of get down to the final priorities. So um, when we looked at the data, you know, there was 28 health issues that were pulled out of the, the um, entire data set. So because every health issue is important, we needed to somehow have some cri criteria to prioritize these health issues. So we asked the core team after they heard all the data, we put together the list of the 28 issues that were pulled from there, and then we asked them to look at this criteria to determine what they felt were the biggest health needs in our community. And so after we did a multi-voting technique, so we went through a round of voting and then we eliminated some and then we went through another round of voting and we eliminated, so we went through three rounds of voting and that's how we got down to our final priorities. And so that's our final priorities. So behavioral health, obesity and active living, um, diabetes and access to care were the four final priorities. So. What the EPI team is going to do now is go through all the data for you guys. Um, they did narrow it down a little bit, but everything will be available on our website for everyone to review afterwards. Um, but then they're going to go through all the data and then they're going to go through the priority data so you can see why this, these four priority health issues were chosen. So now I'm going to turn it over to Ryan. Hello everyone, we are going to start reviewing our data from our community health assessment. We've broken down the data into different sections, um, mostly by health issues, a few other sections like demographics and socioeconomic status. Um, we're going to end with the four priorities as well. Um, so those will be the, at the very end of the assessment data we are reviewing. So we're gonna start with the demographic data from McHenry County. So most of this data for the um, demographic data comes from the American Community Survey. The American Community Survey um, collects data yearly from residents of the entire United States. With that data, you're able to drill down into county level and even go further into census tract level data. Um, that data is either in one-year estimates or five-year estimates. For this assessment, we are using the five-year estimates. Those estimates are, um, have less margin, uh, lower margin of error compared to the one-year estimates, and so they are generally better to use for something like this. So when we're comparing our data in this section, we're going to be looking at our most kind of recent data at the time we pulled it, which was 2019, and comparing it to five years before, which is 2014, to look at annual trends. We'll also be comparing ourselves to Illinois and the United States as a whole with data from 2019 to see how we compare to them as well. 
Data for 2020 has been posted um, by the US Census Bureau for this. However, due to COVID, they were able, unable to collect as much data during 2020 as normal. And so that data does have a, uh, a bigger margin of error on it. So it's a little less reliable. So we're focusing on the 2019 data. Obviously, COVID happened after 2019, and so some trends may be different than we are currently presenting. We'll do our best to point out where that might be the case with where we have data for more recent years. Um, but we are looking at 2019 for most of our snapshots here in this section. So in terms of the population of McHenry County, uh, McHenry County is about 307,714 people. It is a little lower than where we were in 2014. However, it's only about 0.1% um, lower in comparison, so it is really about the same. Um, on the map on the right, and we're gonna show a few maps like this, we are looking at the differences by census tract within McHenry County. So it is a little hard to figure out exactly where these areas kind of border the, the different townships. Um, we'll do our best to make sure we make that as clear as possible. Um, this of course is available on, will be available online as well and you can of course look more detail there. In terms of the population density of McHenry County, we of course differ widely depending on our census tracts. Um, the highest areas in McHenry County are in Woodstock, McHenry, Crystal Lake, Huntley, Lake in the Hills and Algonquin, with that Crystal Lake, Lake in the Hills and Huntley area kind of being the highest population density within McHenry County. In terms of the racial and ethnic distribution in McHenry County, the majority of McHenry County is non-Hispanic white. 81.1% of McHenry County is non-Hispanic white as of 2019. The next highest uh, racial ethnic distribution is our Hispanic or Latino population, which is at 13.1%. Um, the non-Hispanic Asian population is 2.8% of McHenry County residents. The non-Hispanic multiracial population is 1.5%. Non-Hispanic Black or African American is 1.4%. And the non-Hispanic American Indian or Alaska Native and the non-Hispanic other race is 0.1%. In the other race in this particular slide for American Community Survey data, we are grouping um, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander in that particular other grouping. There are a few times in this presentation where we will use the classification other race. It does differ depending on the data source what is grouped into that other race category and we will clarify what is considered other race, where it differs in the presentation. So in comparison to historical data, the Hispanic or Latino population um, increased by about 10.1% in comparison to the historical data from 2014, and the non-Hispanic black or African American population increased by 16.7% in comparison to the historical population. Um, in terms of the racial and ethnic distribution within McHenry County, we do have census tracts with a higher percentage of individuals who identify as either Hispanic or identify as non-Hispanic Asian. In terms of those who identify as Hispanic, census tracts with a higher percentage of those who identify as that particular racial and ethnic group um, are in the Harvard area, parts of Woodstock, McCollum Lake, and Crystal Lake. In terms of the residents who identify more as non-Hispanic Asian, we have a higher percentage in census tracts for um, Woods Woodstock, Huntley, Lake in the Hills, and Algonquin. The primary language in McHenry County is English. 85.8% of the population speaks only English as of 2019. However, we do have 14.2% of the population that does speak a language other than English, with 8.9% of the population speaking Spanish or Spanish Creole, 3.4% speaking another Euro in other Indo-European language, 1.5% speaking Asian and Pacific Island languages, and 0.3% speaking an other language. In comparison to the historical data from 2014, we do have a lower percentage of the population that speaks in other Indo-European language. Otherwise, the relative percent actually is the same for all the other language groups. We also looked at those residents that speak English less than very well. Um, in McHenry County, 5% of the population in 2019 spoke English less than very well, which was lower than we were in 2014 at 5.6%. It is also lower than the Illinois and United States data, um, which are 8.6% and 8.4% respectively. However, we do have census tracts with a higher percent of the population that speaks English less than very well. This is, of course, important to note because we have to make sure we use the language that is preferred in those areas. Um, those areas include Harvard, um, 
areas of Woodstock and areas of Crystal Lake. Now this map actually closely reflects the map we have for our Hispanic population. So in most of these cases, it is likely Spanish that is the preferred language, though we do not have data for that particular um, reference. In terms of the age distribution within McHenry County, 29.8% of the population is in the 45 to 64 age group. 18.4% of the population is in the 5 to 17 or the 30 to 44 age group. And 14% are in the 18 to 29 or 65 and older age group, with only 5.5% um, younger than 5. In comparison to the historical data, we do have a slightly lower percent of the population in the 0 to 17 range. However, it is lower than 10% change compared to historical, so it is a relatively minor difference. Um, in terms of the 18 to 29 age group, we also had a relatively small increase in that as well. Again, relatively minor, um, not really a big difference, and a small difference for the 30 to 44 as well, where it is a decrease. However, our biggest population change in terms of the age distribution is actually our 65 and older population, which had a 26.1% increase in comparison to the 2014 data. In terms of within McHenry County, we do have some differences in the age distribution within McHenry County as well. We do have a few census tracts that have a higher percent of the population that is under 18. That is in part of Harvard and part of Huntley and Lake in the Hills. We also do have a part of the population um, to the east of Marengo covering kind of Union and a little bit beyond that that is um, more likely to be 65 and older. However, as you can see from that middle map on the slide, most of this is actually in that red color in that middle group. So we actually do have a large part of the population in that 65 and older distributed throughout the county. Um, and then in terms of the percent of residents 85 and older, towards the western part of McHenry is where most of our census tracts have a higher percent of the population that is 85 and older, though there are some areas in other census tracts as well in the east as well. We're going to cover the socioeconomic characteristics next. Um, so as with the demographic data, this does come from the American Community Survey, and we use the same methodology there where, where we're comparing 2019 to 2014 and looking at 2019 data for McHenry, Illinois, and the United States to see how we compare. So in terms of the educational attainment within McHenry County, the majority of the population has a bachelor's degree or higher, some college or associate's degree, or a high school graduate or equivalent, at 34.5% for those that have a bachelor's degree or higher, 32.2% that have some college or associate's degree, and 26.5% that have a high school graduate or equivalent. Um, about 7%, that's 6.9% to be exact, have less than a high school graduate. In comparison to the historical data for 2014, we do have a lower percent of the population that has less than a high school graduate and an increase in the percent of the population that has a bachelor's degree or higher. That is indicating that our population distribution in comparison to the past is having higher education than compared to 2014. However, we do have demographic differences in educational attainment. Um, on these slides where we're showing demographic differences, we are focusing on those demographic groups that had a difference. Um, there are groups where they, there was no difference com in comparison to our reference. Generally, our reference is going to be not Hispanic or Latino if it's an ethnicity, non-Hispanic white if we have race and ethnicity combined, or white if we have race alone. If we're not showing a particular grouping, it's either because there was no difference or because we could not determine a difference based off the data we had available. Um, the full details of all of that can, of course, be found in the report. So if you're interested in the exact percentages for these groups, we would recommend that you check out that report when it is posted. So in terms of educational attainment, um, those who identify as Hispanic or Latino are 25.2% like, less likely to have a high school or advanced degree compared to non-Hispanic white, and 35.6% of those who identify as other race were less likely to have that high school or advanced degree comparison to white. In terms of this particular slide, other race does include American Indian or Alaskan Native, um, those who identify as multiracial, those who identify as other. Um, and also those who identify as Asian are 8.7% less likely to have a high score advanced degree than those compared to white. However, this is not truly a lower education for that group because actually for an advanced degree, they are more likely, significantly more likely to have an advanced degree. So those who identify as Asian were 72.9% more likely to have an advanced degree. That's associate's degree, bachelor's degree, medical degree, et cetera, all those higher degrees than those compared to those who identify as white. 
Those who identify as American Indian or Alaska Native were 59.9% less likely to identify themselves, or sorry, 59.9% less likely to have an advanced degree in comparison to those who are white. And those who identify as other were 69.9% less likely to, than those who identify as white. And sorry, I, did, I think I said something wrong in the previous slide. The, those who, for other, for this particular slide, it is actually grouping multiracial and those who identify as other, it is not grouping the American Indian or Alaska Native into that. Uh, Native Hawaiian is grouped into other as well, though, in this case. And then in terms of those who identify as Hispanic, they were 57.1% less likely to have an advanced degree in comparison to not those who are non-Hispanic white. So you can see we do have significant disparities in our community for both the attainment of a high school degree or more or the attainment of an uh, advanced degree. In terms of within McHenry County, um, we also have differences by census tracts. So those census tracts that have a higher percentage of people with a less than high school degree um, are in Harvard is that darkest area, and kind of around the Harvard area is that red area. And then Woodstock and McCollum Lake are those other two kind of reddish areas on the slide. In terms of median household income, um, McHenry County in 2019, the median household income was 86,799. This was 13.7% 13 13 higher in comparison to our 2014 data. However, some of the difference in 2019 in comparison to 2014 is because of inflation. It's a relatively minor amount of that. We don't have the exact calculation, but the inflation does account for some of that difference. However, in comparison to Illinois and the United States, McHenry County also has a higher median household income. Um, our household income is 31.7% higher than compared to Illinois, and 38.1% higher for McHenry compared to the United States. We also have demographic differences by median household income. Um, the median household income is 34.8% higher for those who identify as Asian compared to those who identify as white. It is 28.1% lower for those who identify as other race compared to, sorry, other race or ethnicity compared to those who identify as white. And 19.4% lower for those who identify as multiracial multi compared to those who identify as white. It is also 25.2% lower for those who identify as Hispanic or Latino compared to those who identify as non-Hispanic white. And in terms of age group trends, the median household income is 45.4% lower for those aged 15 to 24 in comparison to 24 to 44. And 14.2% higher for those who are aged 45 to 64 compared to 24 to 44. And it is also lower for those aged 65 um, and older compared to 24, and 40, to 24 to 44. So in terms of that, those uh, populations that are, of course, kind of younger than the working age, still in school, have a lower median household income. Nothing that's really surprising there. Um, and those that are 65 and older also have that lower median household income, likely because they're no longer in the workforce. They're using um, other forms of income, Social Security, and things of that nature. In terms of within McHenry County, we also do have um, differences in terms of the median household income. Um, that kind of darkish area kind of borders Huntley and like in the hills, and there's some kind of darker red areas. Really what I wanted to point out here is that we do have differences within McHenry County as well. We do have areas that have a higher median household income. And then in terms of earnings by sex, so in this we are looking at the past 12-month earnings by sex across all education levels. And for the McHenry County population as a whole, and for all population or for all education levels, those who are female have a lower median earning than those who are male. Um, some of this difference might result from the fact that this data does include those who are outside of the workforce. However, we are using a median in this case, so I do not think that accounts for all the difference. I think this is really demonstrating that we have a significant